Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Sally Pinto and I'm from the Yonkers North, neighborhood naturally occurring retirement community. We launched back in January of 2020 and we're here to serve seniors 60 plus in Northeast Yonkers. We have lots of fun programs and activities and we also have a lot of resources for you as well. Our programs include meditation chair yoga, uh, body mind fitness, bingo, and any other programs that you might be interested in, like arts and gardening. We have our resource specialist, Alexa Smith, who can help you with finding services and activities out there for you, as well as our nurse, Barbara Simone, who can help answer your health-related questions. We're here for you, we're here for our community, and we look forward to seeing you in our programs. Enjoy. Hello, everybody. I'm Alexa Smith, the resource specialist with the Yonkers Mark. I'm here to help with application assistance, referrals for home delivered meals, and transportation services will be coming soon. We also um, offer Zoom activities and Zoom programs. And if you have any other questions or concerns, I'm here to help. Thank you so much and enjoy the program. Welcome, I'm Barbara Simone, registered nurse. I recently retired from Westchester County's health department as a public health nurse. I am now here to try to assist you with any medical, or preventive care issues. Enjoy this program and I'm looking forward to working with you. Hi guys, how are you? Good to see you. I'm so glad you came out this afternoon. I know you, we didn't come out, right? We're, we're home <laughs> snugly in our house, right? Oh. Great. We're gonna have fun today. We're gonna do some garden birds, which I think are perfect. You know, because of all the snow we've had and everything, we wanna think of spring too. But we'll put them in a little winter scene though. With maybe some berries, some evergreen needles, uh, maybe a bird feeder and stuff. Um, one of the birds that I really love to do is a cardinal. Uh, cardinals are very pretty. Uh, both the male and the female are very pretty. Um, the, the method that I teach is a shapes method. And that is when I teach art, I use circle, square, triangle, and cylinder as my basic shapes to draw pretty much everything. Uh, there are combinations of those shapes that will make anything that you want, including some contour lines, some erasures, and form fit, and you you can do anything with those lines. So we're gonna I'm gonna point these out to you as we do this. All right, we're gonna do one bird first, and then we'll do the second bird right after. Okay, and they're gonna pretty much repeat. They'll have the same shape because they are the same breed of bird. All right, and you'll see you'll notice a, a circle. You'll notice maybe an oval, a triangle, like that. So you'll keep your eye out for them as we go. What you may want to do on the back of your drawing paper. Is just on the back, put those four shapes, circle, square, triangle, cylinder. Uh, you can just put the shapes on, which will be a reminder to you when we draw and when you draw on your own to refer to those when you're looking at anything. I always say that when we do a window, it's easy because it's a rectangle, but sometimes they're more complicated shapes that you have to mix these shapes together to actually get, okay? But today we're gonna keep it easy on you. <laughs> we're gonna take it real easy on you. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is have your paper right out, have your pencil ready, okay? Does anyone have color pencils with them today? Or anything that, of color that you could use like crayons or um, anything of that nature? If you don't, it's okay. You can always color these at another time. That's, that's no problem at all, okay? All right, let's do this. What I'd like you to do, I'm going to switch over my, my actual uh, video camera to my drawing board, all right? I'll, I'll switch this over. It's coming. Here we go. It's like the big unveil, right, Mike? There it is. There is the big <laughs> unveil. Do you, do, you new, do you notice two circles on my paper? I would like you to draw those on your paper too. Just like that, draw two circles. Okay, and those are, those are gonna represent the size of the heads of the two birds that we're gonna do, okay? Very good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the body of the bird and it's just an oval shape around and down 
like so. Can you see that? I do, I do close-ups like this too. These are helpful. So you can see, just like I'm drawing it with you. See? Little shapes. Now I'm pressing pretty hard. You may want to press lightly because you may want to erase. You know, sometimes you make a mistake and you might want to erase it, all right? So you can do it. But don't get overwhelmed with erasing. If you don't get it happens once, then that's okay. Try it again, but that should be it because we don't want to be we leave you behind. We want to keep, keep working, okay? And uh, let's go over here. This is an oval, circle and oval. We're going to do this the same thing to the other bird right here. Same thing. Just like that, see? Notice the size of the head in relation to the body, right? It's not too large, not too small. It's just about right. Just about right. There you go. Now their tails, their tails are about twice the size of their head. So if I measure the head with my pencil like this, if I measure the head with my pencil like this, and I go one, two, I'll know approximately where their tail will be. See where I made the line, see? So you measure, you can do it by eye too. You don't have to measure necessarily with pencil, but um, if you get the proportion right, it really looks very good, okay? There you go. There you go. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my other bird here. One, one and two. And that looks like about, that's the spot. And of course, those dots will, we will erase those dots if we need to when we do the tail. Okay. There you go. Okay. Now, it helps to have a ruler here because their tail is fairly straight. But what you can do is just do the best you can. We'll do a triangular shape here. And we're going to do a triangular shape here. So you see simple shapes. We have a circle and a variation of a circle and oval. And we have a kind of an elongated triangular shape that make up a large part of each one of the birds, okay? And most of the birds are built like this. Their proportion of head size may be different, but they're built like this in segments, very easy, very, very easy, okay? Now there's two triangles coming up. The uh, the the actual um, cardinal has a triangle kind of right like this on the head, and we'll do the other one over here. It's like like, like this, just like this. Come out like this, and I'm not going to press hard because I'm actually going to change it a little bit. Can you see? There you go. You notice there's a word called overlapping, right? This rec this actual triangle that we're using is overlapping the circle, partly overlapping the circle, see? Very good. Again, we'll probably erase a little bit of that because it's not the final shape that we'll be looking for, but you'll see it. That's the placement of it right there, okay? And of course, the, uh, the male has a very large crest. So we're gonna put the crest up here like that. And for the female, we're gonna put a crest here like so, like that. And these are both triangles. They look a little like shark fins. 
<laughs> okay. So we get everything settled here. I'm going to erase the circle that goes inside the beak. Erase that circle. We don't need that anymore. So we can erase that circle that goes inside the beak, okay? Here we are. In, any Inside the beak is going to be the round circle that we did for, for the head, okay? Here we are. So my easel bubbles so much here. There we are. So you can see the difference. See? There we are. Very good. Now, let's take a look at the back here, okay? We have some feathers back here, and we have the edge of the wings, the primaries. So what I'm going to do is give it a little bit of an edge there and a little bit of an edge here. Yeah. Look at that. Look how cool that is. Isn't that great? So when you follow the shapes method, you'll find your success goes up very quickly. Very, very quickly. You'll see it. So, Mike, if people have questions, they could just unmute themselves and just ask. Absolutely, because we have we have a few in the class, so it won't be so much of a problem. By all means, guys, if you have a question, let me know. Let well, you're going to be really surprised because we have 28 connections with over 45 people drawing together because we oh. have doubles and triples. Oh, really? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yeah, we're a small, cozy group who's who's really cheerful and <laughs> um, we, we will entertain, you know, the unmuting and unmuting everybody just, you know, if you want to show your work and get, um, a critique from Mike about how to change, let's say like a circle is a little big or a triangle is a little small, or you're not right. sure about perspective, just, you know, speak up and then we can, um, highlight you on the screen and then you, Mike can see what you're doing. And I do want to take this opportunity to introduce our one and only, the spectacular Sally Pinto. She She's now in our Zoom room and she's from our NORC partnership. And we're so grateful to NORC for helping us with programs such as this, all the support that they have given uh, for the arts and for wellness. So Sally, do you have a few things you want to say? Hi, everybody. I hope you enjoy. Thank you, Mike Teeter, for doing this. This is very calming. Can't wait. To oh, I can't do that. I know I can't do that. All right. So anyway, hope everyone enjoys and um, have fun. Oh, yes, you can, Sally. We started with the few shapes, right, Mike? Do you want to just right, just a couple of shapes. shapes? Yes. Yeah, just a couple of shapes. And so far, look what we have. We have the beginning of a masterpiece. So there's an O. Okay. And the circle. So I have all the lines that I need erased right now. I'm going to leave them be for a moment because what we're going to do is turn our attention to somewhere else in the drawing now. What we're going to do is we're going to have a bird feeder out here, right about in here. Okay. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the shape of the bird feeder, which is very similar to making a house. Very similar. And I'm going to show you how to do that. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a box. Okay. Let's make a box. Now your bird feeder can be any size. It could be closer to us or farther away. It all depends, okay? See, and all I'm doing is making a rectangle. See how I did that? I made a rectangle just like that. And it doesn't have to be exactly there. What you can do is you put it a little lower. You want it a little higher. Maybe they're, on, maybe they're in a bush on the ground so the bird feeder's a little higher. It's okay. But we're going to actually make a very simple A-frame bird feeder here and with a couple of perches sticking out so that they can actually go in there and have some food, hopefully before the squirrels steal it all. My sister was pestered with a squirrel. He was, uh, she called him Houdini uh, because he could actually get into everything that they tried, uh, no matter what he, they did. To, to stop him from eating all the bird seed. They, they couldn't get him to stop. So they just gave up and started feeding him. <laughs> now, what I'm gonna do here is 
I'm going to make a small A shape right here at the end of the box. See there? Small A shape. See there? Little A shape. These are some of the most common uh, drawings to do. The scenes from outdoors, uh, birds, uh, nature. Um, if you want to wait for your blood pressure to go down, let me tell you, this is it. This is it. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to create inside here. I'm going to create a little rectangle. And that's going to be the overhang and the side of our bird feeder. Can you see this, boys and everyone? Cool. You see that, students? Yeah. There you go. I'm so used to saying boys and girls. Pardon me. There you go. Woohoo. There you go. See there? Okay. There you go. I hope these close ups are really helpful for you. All right. And now. We had a quick question. Can you talk about how you hold your pencil? Because we had a couple of people talk. Yeah, actually, I, it's a funny way. I developed it a long time ago to do it. Usually when I'm drawing or writing, I do this. But uh, when I found that I put my hand on the paper, I would smudge everything. So by doing this, I only drag my nails on the paper and I draw this way. And I, I actually paint sometimes both ways. I'll, I'll paint this way. Sometimes I'll paint this way or I'll paint this way too. Yeah, it just depends. But uh, I try to minimize my amount of smudging on the paper. So that's why I don't do this. See, I don't, you know, and it's a kind of hard to do it without stabilizing your hand. See, that's all right. Okay, now we have to draw a straight line across. Straight line across. So let's do that. Straight line. And okay, this is why it's good to have a six ruler in your, uh, in your kit. Because you can use it to actually make things that are straight lined and not too large. You notice the angle on the back of the actual bird feeder is going to look just like the one in the front. This looks just like that. See? Just like that. And what I'm going to do is Make an angle here for that bird feeder. And before you know it, just straighten this out here. That's why I don't use a ruler, because I need to go back and correct all the time. Just like that. See? Now, it looks like a house. But if you notice, some bird feeders do look like that. They have a little bit of a cable that goes through the top, hangs it between trees. They'll have a perch, right? We'll put a, that's going to be actually a cylinder. And those of you who don't know what a cylinder is, just in case, that's uh, kind of like what's left after the paper towels have been finished. It's the tube, the cardboard tube. That's the cylinder. That's the cylinder. And we're going to use, we use that a lot in nature. We use, use it a lot to build our own bodies. We use cylinders for our fingers, our arms, our legs, uh, our part of our neck, too, and our toes, so, and our legs. So, it, it's very useful for the human body. Okay. Now, it's going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this on a pole. So I'm going to drop a pole going down. Like so. Now, the Cardinals are, uh, they're a pretty tough breed. Uh, they don't get bullied a lot at the bird feeder. Uh, when they usually move in, a lot of birds move out. They, they, uh, the only thing they respect is a, is a squirrel. Uh, they don't like to play around with squirrels too much, but uh, they're, they get their way. Sparrows leave, chickadees leave, all kinds of birds. They all leave. Uh, so it's, it's one of those things where you want to look for that cardinal and get out of the way if you're another bird. Okay. And now what we can do is uh, on the side, I'm going to put... A little, a little perch like that. And I'm going to put a little perch on the other side like that. You see that little perches? And I'm going to put a little screen right here, right up to here. And it's going to have all, all 
kinds of stuff in it. And we'll indicate that by making little dots and dashes, stuff like that. Seeds would be too small to make, so we can we can just play with it like that, all across, like that, okay. just like that. Okay, like that. So it'll give it a feeling of a little bit of a bird feeder. See. Yeah. And of course, we can actually, when you color this, you can actually make the seeds a different color and stuff like that, make the roof brown, things like that. That'll work really well. And many people put these on 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 poles and then grease the poles for the for the squirrels, but you have to make them so tall because the squirrels can leap. They can leap so far up and get on top. It's amazing. Amazing. Okay. Very good. So we have a nice composition going here, everyone. See this? We have a nice flow here. Nice flow. Bird, bird, and bird feeder, right? Very nice. Very nice. And again, simple shapes. Triangles, squares, cylinders. Very important. And you'll see those in art schools all over the world. And that's how many artists build their first lessons on them. Here we are. All right. Very good. Okay. Now I'm going to make the horizon pretty high up here. Uh, I'm going to make the horizon way up here. And the horizon is where we separate our sky and our land from. So I'm going to do a not a perfect straight line, but roughly a straight line all the way across. See there? See there? Now we know where our sky is. Now we know where the background land is, all right? These birds are in the foreground. They're right up close to us, right up close. The bird feeder is what's called the midground. They're in the midground. It's a little farther away, a little farther away. And of course, the background is everything behind that. All right. So we got foreground, midground, background, okay? So you want to think of those things all the time. Just like our shape, circle, square, triangle, cylinder. You know, if I was to put this cardinal up on top of the roof of this bird feeder, it would be much smaller. It would be much smaller, okay? Just to show the size change, right? You want to think about that. You always want to think of three dimensions when you do your drawing, okay? All righty. Very, very good. Okay. All right. Now what I'm going to do is... That bottom part of the circle on each one of the birds. Can you see this, everyone? The bottom part of the circle. I want to erase that part that joins the body. I don't need that. So I'm going to erase that. And of course, as you get more and more practice and you learn to press lightly when you draw, you'll be able to completely erase these. Completely erase them. They have beautiful whistles in the spring, too, the cardinals. When they're looking for their, their potential mate, they have a beautiful song. Okay. All right. So here, let's take a look at what we've got so far. We've got birds just floating in space, and we've got a nice bird feeder here, right? All right. Let's put them on something. We have to, we have to give them something to be actually standing on. Um, and because they snuggle down on the branches, we may not see other than their toes grasping onto the branch. So let's do this. Let's have a nice diagonal here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and with a branch, I'm going to go underneath each one of the birds and do something like that, see? Notice where it actually goes into the bird, uh, right around the, the back of where the tail is, right there. That's where their legs would be back there. Okay. Okay, nice.
And we can have little shoots that come off here like this, you know, maybe put, uh, this could be an evergreen and we'll put, we'll put, uh, we'll put some needles, some pine needles on here, you know, we'll do that. That'll look really nice too. Okay. When I do a painting, I do a drawing first, generally to get an idea of what I want to do to see if it'll work. And then sometimes I use Photoshop to manipulate things to look around and see where I can best put things. So, but drawing is important and you really want to practice drawing as much as you can. Um, even if you're not going to be an, what you quote, quote an artist for the future, you want to make sure that you practice drawing because it's really the fundamental of good art. It's very good to, to know, very, very good to know. Um, It'll give you the basics for everything you need. And then all you have to do is learn color and you'll be all set. You'll be all set now. Okay. So we have, we have here and maybe up here, we'll put a little one here too. Just coming into the scene here like that. See how it balances it off. See there. See, Nice little balance. See, it's like almost, it's almost like a circular look to it right here. See? So a person who looks at the work can go, oh, I'll start here visually. Oh, come down. Oh, there's the bird feeder. Oh, look here. Here's a branch. And then come all the way across and start again. See? So we kind of choreograph the idea of the viewer of what they're going to see and what they're going to look at, which is great. All right. Very, very simple. Okay. Now, let's, what we're going to do is we're going to make their characteristic mask. We've got that great mask that they make, that they have here. It goes underneath their beak, okay? And we're going to put that up here like this, right across the top. Just like that. Looks like a little box right now, but we're going to darken it in. We're going to darken it in and we're not going to touch the bill. The bill is going to be another color. It's going to be kind of an orangey color. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is just shade in the part that we need shaded. Okay. Just like that. They used to call these birds the little bandits because of their little shading and around their eyes. You know, there we go. Here we are. Here we are. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. You see? It's that little, that little shading there. There you go. Perfect. Now, remember, I told you we were going to actually change their bill a little bit from triangular, give it a little bit more of a hook look to it, right? And that's what the cardinals have. They have a little more of a hook to their beak at the top beak. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to show you. I'm going to hold it up close, and I can show you what, what I mean by that, okay? Can you see the little, see the little hook on their beak right there? That little hook, a little tiny hook there. All right. This one has got a little bit of a pencil shaving in it here. So let me do that again. Let me do that here. All right. Kind of like that. <laughs> like that. Very nice. So nice. These birds are a lot in the winter. They come out. They're not afraid of the winter. They sing during the winter also. Um, they also have little songbirds called chickadees, which are very brave. They come out. They're out all, all seasons. All seasons they are. And they are amazing how they withstand some of the cold weather. 
from the co-ed are just unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. So just shade in the best you can. A little in here, like so. All right. And we'll make a see that little fluff on the top of their crest? See that little line right there? Those little lines there? Make a couple of little lines there. That'll show that there's separation of the feathers there. See? A little separation of the feathers. We'll do the same thing to the other, the other one. See, see? And this, this way, and then down, and down. Beautiful. There we are. Before you know it. There's some great, great, great cardinals here. We'll darken it in just a little bit so you can see it because I'm pleased the way it looks right now. So I can I can darken my lines in a little bit. Okay, just like so. Yeah, just take your time. Take your time. Yeah. There we are. And the same thing. I'll darken my line. I press a little bit harder. And the other one comes down. This way you'll be able to see it a little better too, I believe, by me darkening it in. There we are. And of course, we have our primaries, right? There we are. There they are. Nice and dark, nice and rich. Try to get some of that extra erasing off that we have. Okay. Very good. I think it's a good time now if we could possibly look at everybody's. It's all fun. So we have Ed Walsh on the line. Ed, 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 Ed very nice. Very accurate, too. They're very nice. Very nice. Oh, thank you. I love Ed. it. I love it. Oh, now I'm going to show Hannah. Hannah, bring it a little closer, Hannah. Yes. Okay. All right. Beautiful. And I love the way you did the bird feeder too. Very nice. Okay. Now we're going to show Julie's granddaughter. Look at Julie. Look at you, girl. No, Julie's yes. granddaughter. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. I think you should be very happy with that. I, I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. You're going to be a great artist. It's nice, Deanna. Yeah, Deanna. And mom and dad got in on the act too. Let's see. They did. Oh, wow. Look at, oh, oh, competition, oh. competition. Here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great, guys. Very and nice. Very now nice. we're going to look at grandma's. Okay, look. Let's see. There's Miss Julie. There we go. Oh, Miss Julie, there you are. Look yeah. at them. Very respectable birds there. I'll tell you that. <laughs> very nice. Right. So, do yeah, we have. Oh. Nice. We've got more people who want to share. So here, let me uh, show Chris Sheeran. Here we go. Chris, hold it up a little higher. Yep. And then Whoa, the side a little. Down, huh? Okay. Here Very we nice, go. Chris. Very nice. Thank you. you got the basics in there. I'll tell you that much. Mm -hmm. That's good. Good. That's very and good. Now, I love it. We have um, Muriel. 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 Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, well done, Muriel. Well done. Do we well, have man. anyone else who wants to share? You, you guys are wonderful. Oh, Stuart. Stuart wants to share. So hold on, Stuart. Stuart let's go. take a look, Stuart. Yeah. Stuart, a little lower. A little lower, Stuart. A little. Oh, there it is. Right there. There it is. Look at that. Yeah, they're heading over to that bird feeder. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's great, Stuart. Okay. Wonderful job. Wow. Wonderful job. And Miss Scalise, uh, I, I, uh, there's a beautiful, yes, here we go. <laughs> wow, look at that. This is Taylor, right? Yes, Taylor? Taylor. Taylor, could you raise it up a little higher? Oh, very nice. I like the way you have the bird feeder a little lower than mine. I think that's good creativity. That's really good. I like that. Good job. Thumbs up, man. Jenny, those are very good birds. I'll tell you that right now. Thank you, thank you. 
They're wonderful. You draw. I can see you draw. I can tell. You draw. You like okay, to draw. Thank you. Very and nice. I think Very I nice. have Liz. Liz is on the line. Yes, she's got something. Yeah, show yours, Liz. Let's see. Liz, how All are right. you? It's not in, in permanent marker, but. Oh, you, <laughs> you're, 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 you're very brave. <laughs> yeah. That's good. You did a good job. I don't even do a permanent marker. <laughs> All I had around here, so, but well, I you, wanted you, to jump in on you it. Did, you did a very good job, I'll tell you. That's nice, good. nice, very nice. Terrific. Now, everybody, what we're going to do is let's give some foliage to our tree here. Uh, since it is winter, what we're going to do is uh, create very thin, spirally little thread-like needles, okay? And I'm going to show you how they're going to look up really close. Uh, and this is going to be like an, a pine tree, like a pine tree, evergreen tree. See? And uh, they're really long. Can, can you see that? Can you see that? See how, see how cute they look? These trees are so beautiful when they're painted. Um, I love doing these in winter. The, uh, uh, all kinds of just the bark itself is really great. And also the nestled snow that's on a new, newly fallen tree like that is just beautiful. Um, they, what they do is uh, there's, there's a little bit of a twist and a little bit of a turn like, like that. Zip. Oh, and it goes spiraling around. You can see them when you go out in the nature, you can take a look. You can take a look. They're really quite easy to do. Really quite easy to do. And they all start from one, one part. See, they start from one centerpiece. They call that the candle when they start growing, a little, little candle there. And uh, they all originate there and they spray outward like this. Huh? This is going to add so much to your drawing. Uh, up here, you can do the same thing. Yeah, see? This actually fills in beautiful spots too. And you can color with different greens depending upon how much the sun is hitting each each needle. Okay? Each needle. Uh, just super great stuff. And you can put acorns in. <coughs> so much to do. Right? So you can just very nice. It's almost like doing grasses, but grasses from one little dot and shooting outwards like an explosion. Can you see boys and girls? See? I mean, I mean boys and girls and adults, yeah. and ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Here we go. There you are. Making us feel young, Mike. <laughs> yeah. No, it just it becomes so repetitive for me. It's amazing. It's like I'm not like okay. boys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my wife makes fun of me at night because I actually talk out in my sleep. And she says you were you were instructing another class last night. <laughs> I was actually talking to the kids in my sleep, and I woke up. It was like, okay, do that, do this, and do that, and it was like, oh my goodness, it's so much a part of me, you know. But um, this is just so much fun. I love teaching these to the kids because they got their whole lives ahead of them, and they're going to be able to explore so much with drawing. It's just a way of a great way. I tell the kids it's a great way to relax too. When you after school, you do your homework. Um, I used to love it when I used to have it before a test. Before a test, it's and I'd study at home, and then uh, I take my drawing pad out, and I would I would just relax and just draw and draw and draw, and it just made me feel more composed going to sleep and then waking up the next day, and of course acing the test. Definitely acing the test. So you see how it is. It's very light. If you keep your pressure very light on it and just flick it from one little dot, put one little dot on the branch, one little dot, that can be your candle. Okay. And if you study them, if you, next time you're out in the woods, go over to an, go over to a pine. Okay. And take a look at them and you'll see, <laughs> you can see how their needles come out from one spot, one spot. Okay. How cool that is, right? Now I can add a little thickness to my branch because <clears throat> it's not going to be too thin like that. So I'm going to add a little bit of thickness all the way up by putting another line, parallel line following that main branch, right? All the way up.
Of course, birds are not the only thing you can do. There's nature, you know, drawing nature, um, all kinds of animals, beavers, foxes, uh, groundhogs, um, everything is just out there to behold. And once you learn this, the, 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 the techniques of actually drawing them, you'll be able to pick them out and draw them. You won't have to worry about how to do it because you'll know how. You'll know how. Here we are. And I'm going to put a dot here for a dot here. Let's not forget the eye too, everyone. Let's make sure we put the eye. We're only going to see one eye on each bird because uh, we don't see the full front of the bird. So make sure the eye is small. It's not. It's not a big. It's not a big eye. So far, so good, everybody. I'll tell you, I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. You guys are doing a wonderful job, you know. And it's not difficult, just step by step by step by step. That's all it is. You follow it, and you can do very, very well. Uh, if you notice that down here, there's a little bit of a blank spot here that we could probably put something interesting. Well, I think a bush would be nice there, a little bush or something. It's especially great because... The birds flying around, they land on the perches where the seed is, but they're very exposed there to predators like hawks and things. So they want someplace close where they can jump off the perch, fly over quickly and hide in the bush. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you how to do it. It, it involves a squiggly pattern. It involves a squiggly pattern. And the way I'm doing it is kind of like this. It's uh. We do the outside profile of the bush, like so. Can you see that? Just pretend your hand's really nervous. And you're moving in, in a circular fashion. You're moving in a circle, but all zigzags on the outside. See, all zigzags on the outside. You know, because I don't want my pole to stick through there. So that's basically what I've got. I've got that. Now I've got that bush right there. There it is. Now, I'm not just going to leave it like that. What I'm going to do is give it some structure. So what I want to do is I want to put a little bit of branches, some branches in it, just to give it some, some structure. And by that, I mean, I'm going to so I get it up here a little higher for you so you can see it a little clearer. I'm going to put, uh, just like I did with the, the evergreen, I'm going to put some, some structure in there, see, like that. there little branches little branchlets like so mm -hmm. see and it actually makes it it fills in that area too which is great And then I can go back over, do some of my touch-ups here and there. Beautiful. And so. 
Now that could be an evergreen shrub. So you could use green for that, you know, or a, a hue, American U bush, U bush, Y E W, U, right? I also noticed that up in the upper corner here, I forgot to put some more of my needles. So what I'm going to do is, of course, I'm going to do them up there, but of course, I'm going to make them a lot smaller. Okay, we're going to make them a lot smaller. So here we go. A lot smaller. Spray them out. All I do, one at a time. No rushing. Mm -hmm. And what you should do is after our session is done today, maybe take a break or maybe tomorrow sometime. Try to draw something like this again, but make your birds different. Make them smaller, right? Maybe instead of a, you got the basic shape for a house. So instead of putting a bird feeder in, you could actually put a house in the background. Make a house. And that'll help a lot for the scene because it gives places where people are living then. Right. The evergreens all over. Yeah. Now you notice I didn't put the thickness on this on these branches. Why? Because you don't see a lot of detail. So I'm gonna leave that, but up here close, you see the thickness of the branch, see? That's important to see the difference there. When you do draw it, just make it enjoyable though. Don't get all stressed out. Um, it should be fun. It should be always fun. Yeah. I got, I got into the art field basically for teaching purposes. I decided a, against the bohemian lifestyle selling art on, on the corners. <laughs> so the teaching has been very, very uh, fruitful. And I've, been, I've loved it um, no matter where I've been. Now... Might be difficult to see this a little bit, but I'll show you close up. But uh, on the very top of the branch, the main branch that has the little branchlets of the evergreen, I'm putting a wavy line. And what that could be, that could be the layer of an, a little bit of a new fallen snow that's fallen on, that has actually fallen on the branch. See here? And the way we can get that to stand out is we can shade the branch, but not the snow. See there? We can go right up. But let me show you what it looks like, okay? While you're, while you're touching up everything, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shade the branch. And uh, since a lot of us don't have color, I'm not gonna use color. I'll just use uh, gray and white. See here? Up here, up here. There we are, there we are. There we are. All the way. And this will give us the feeling of a little bit of snow just holding tightly onto those little branches, you know, like so. Maybe a little patch of snow on our bird feeder. Maybe a little patch of snow on the bird feeder there too. How oh, nice. Yeah, they're really, uh, they're really important to us in nature. We got to take good care of them. Birds, birds. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> you don't have to put this in, but if you wanted to, to show everyone that that line is the horizon and that sense that's the difference between the land and the sky, what we could do is we can actually put in a couple of clouds, small clouds. Like this. See the clouds? 
Now, it's a little cloud. I'm not going to get them too large. I don't want to overwhelm the scene with a lot of things. But uh, I'm just trying to show you different things in a classroom setting, more or less, that you can add to your drawings and make your drawings good. OK, so I can do a little overlapping there and then do one here. OK. These are basically comprised of little U shapes or Ws that go around in a circular fashion. Can you see that? I love this new camera. It focuses so closely compared to my other one. There we are. Mm -hmm. How nice. Now, the very last thing I would suggest anyone do is shading. And that, of course, depends on your light. Where your, Where is your light coming from? Sometimes we shade with color, too. Like if I was to use the red, the male cardinal, and his wing was creating a little cast shadow on his body, I would just darken that red underneath that wing there, make it look a little bit more like it's a part shade. Um, but um, you can actually do shading just lightly with your pencil depending upon what direction your light's coming from. It could be an overcast day too. Uh, it doesn't show it by these big clouds because they're more like fair weather clouds. So you would have the sun out. But uh, you can do little shadows like this underneath on the pipe that holds the, uh, the bird feeder a little bit. Then rub it down a little bit to make it soft. See, See how it looks like a little cast shadow there? The, heavy, the size of this cast, no light on that. No light. <clears throat> the birds, you can darken the branch right next to the birds because that's maybe the cast shadow of these. Mm -hmm. A simple little thing like this, very simple composition, very simple composition, but it's it's a composition of a backyard anywhere around this area. You know, it's, it could be your backyard, it could be your bird feeder. You know, that's the wonderful thing about it. You know, the subjects are everywhere to be had, everywhere, everywhere. So one of the things you'll fall in love with is your phone or your camera in your phone. You'll be taking pictures everywhere. You know, when you sketch, because you use them as reference, you know. When I started painting years ago, I used to use my S single lens reflex 35 millimeter camera with slide with slides, which are beautiful when they seen on a big screen. Um, and um, I have those collections safely tucked away. But uh, there's now these cameras now that are coming with the phones are just in incredibly detailed and sharp. So you can make some really great, great photos, you know, so you, everybody's taking photos everywhere now, you know, it's one of those things you don't have to worry about processing and all this stuff. You want to feel creative, you go out and you take a picture, you bring it back. If you can, you print it out and you put it next to your easel and you draw it, you try to draw it, you know, that's the good thing about it. It's almost instant. And like I said, you're not going to like everything you do. I never did. I never did. I would have been, I would have been very disappointed if everything came easy. I mean, it, it's true. It's it, we have to work a little bit to be better, to be better at something. And it's always a good idea to concentrate on getting better, getting better, and getting better. You know, don't let things like oh, you know, oh my goodness, this is not working out. I can't do this. You know, it's I'm not talented. Ah, oh, hogwash. No, you just have to practice more. That's all. You just practice. And, and try to keep a smile on your face when you're doing it, you know, because it will come. It will come. I always suggest everybody to, if you don't have a drawing book or sketchbook, um, you want to sign your work, every piece, sign it at the bottom. But most importantly, put the date, put the complete date on each one of them, because you'll have a wonderful time looking back 
in five years, seven years, uh, and, and you, you kids, you'll look back in 20 years and 30 years, and you'll look back and see, look what I did when I was this age. And you'll know exactly the day that you did it. You don't have to guess by year. You'll know exactly how old you were, you know, and that gives you a big thrill. That gives you a risk. Then you can show it to your children, you know, so make art, make art fun. You got to make art fun because that's what it's all about. You know, it's not science, it's not math, it's not ELA. Those are very important. But art is for fun. Art should always be fun. Does anybody have any questions about anything that we've done? You can feel free to unmute yourself. And if you want to show your artwork again, I know we have a couple of people who do. Thanks, Mike. That was great. Thank you so much. I appreciated you being here too. Hey, Mike, a, a quick question. Um, yeah. If you decided at the beginning you were going to do this in in you know color, yes, would you still start? I mean, let's say, I mean, a lot of the cardinal, let's say, is red. Would you yes. draw the outline in red, or would you just stick with the pencil as the outline and then color it in later? Is there any? I, I, I any would start with the pencil and draw it in lightly. Say, if I was doing something for myself or maybe yeah. someone who I was doing it for, I would do everything in pencil first. Sometimes charcoal, light vine charcoal I'll use for a canvas. Uh, I'll do light vine charcoal, brush it off, and then I'll paint, I'll start painting or drawing on top. But for you, to answer your question, just a light pencil would do fine. Yeah, it'll be good. And okay. then you can just start going in and coloring. Uh, colored pencils are wonderful, by the way. They're just, they're easy to transport. You keep them with your kit. You can get a nice pack of 12 to cover a good spectrum of color and uh, get and make sure you have your sharpener with you, most importantly, and an eraser. And uh, you can you can have a lot of fun with color. But that was a good question, too, by the way. Oh, thank you. That was a good question. Oh, thank you very much for the class. That was a lot of fun. Good. I'm so glad. You know, it's important. I, I love sharing this because I enjoy it so much. Yeah, I think I think so many people think, oh, I can't do that. And it, it really isn't true. You know, the, the whole idea that you were talking about with the squares and the circles and whatnot. Yeah. You know, it's just a question of, of looking at things and seeing a square or seeing the, the triangle. It's a, it's a great approach. Yeah. And it's, it's so important. They, they do teach it in art schools, uh, but I teach, I've been teaching young kids so long now that the kids that I first started teaching already graduated from college. But the, they remember, they'll see me in town or something as I, oh my gosh, I'm still drawing, you know. Thank you. And uh, I, I love it. I just love it. And it's all that method. Because when you use that method, it makes it easier for you to draw. You just figure out all proportions and everything at that stage. When I used to, before I started learning how to do it properly, I used to do details right away. All the details. Start with the eyes. And, and then I find out that my, my composition was out of proportion. The perspective was off. So here with the shapes method, circle, square, triangle, cylinder, you get them all on there and you can figure out what you need. And what you need to take away, you know. Oh, very Diana sad. would like to share her drawing. Oh, Can I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. Spotlighter. Yay, Teresa. <gasps> Look at your color use. Oh my goodness. So gracious. I love it. Diana, I love it. I Good love time. it. You are I so talented. You beautiful. Very nice. Very yeah. nice. You are so good, Teresa. That's Deanna. Uh, Deanna. Deanna. Sorry, Deanna. Hi. I see Teresa on the on the Hi, thing. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Very good, Deanna. Very good. Excellent job. You keep drawing, okay? Oh, 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 oh. I see. Very impressive. Oh, that's pretty. Very impressive. Very, nice. Very impressive. I like that. Let's see. Oh, you decided to go the black and white route. Okay. Very good. Thanks, Rich. Very nice. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well Thank done. you for sharing. And I think Hannah wants to share, right, uh, Hannah? Yeah, here, I've got you on the spotlight. There you go, Hannah. Ooh, awesome. look at you. Wow. Look nice. At you. you got those clouds in the back, too. You did those. You got the evergreen needles. Very Thanks. nice. And you can all think about coloring it at some other time. If you want to get pencils or some color pencils, you can color it at any time. But make sure you put the date on the bottom too. Put your put your name and the date. I was saying if you had a sketchbook, 
You don't have to sign every one of them because it's in a sketchbook and it's not going to be torn out. But what you can do is make sure you put your date on it. You know, very nice. Very nice, Anna. I have a question, if I may. Yes. It's Muriel. Yes, Muriel. Um, I, I went a little a little crazy. But, oh, Muriel, yes. But I, I, I have a problem here. I can't hear it here. It just looks like it's hanging off. It's not, something's well, not probably, right. What it is, Muriel, I think your pole is a little too far to the right. You have to center the pole. Oh, the, the center of the pole. The center mass is off a little bit on it. Yeah, center. Uh, that's why it's a little hanging. It looks like okay. it's hanging off a little bit. But I love your accent of your trees in the back. Yeah, I put, a little, nice. I put a little forest in the background. Yes, evergreens, beautiful. I, I See, those are the things that make my heart joyous because I love it when people are creative, when they go at it and do it, you know, just do it. It's only paper and pencil. <laughs> And if it doesn't turn out, you throw it away and start again. There you go. There you, there you go. go. That's it, you know? And just enjoy it as much as you can. You know, and have fun. And keep learning. That's what you want to do. Thank you. It was very, it was great class. I enjoyed thank, it. Thank you, Muriel. Thank you so much. We have another young artist. I, I spotlighted you with your Christmas tree in the background. Do you want to show your art? There we go. Yeah, I don't have your name because I have the Miss Scalise. But yeah, see, I used you put a little bit of a highlighting on. I your... see you're putting the yellow in too. Yeah. Very good. Very nice. Taylor, it's I Taylor, like it. right? That's right. Taylor, very nice. Very nice, Taylor. Keep going. You add stuff. You add. You can add birds flying around on the top of the page too. Maybe Great small job. birds flying up there. You can do that. That'll work too. So. Yeah. Hi everyone, this is Z from Yonkers Public Library. Thanks so much to Sally Pinto and Alexis and Barbara from NORC. Thank you to our community partners, WJCS, the City of Yonkers Office for the Aging, Westchester County Legislator Ruth Walter, Friends of Crestwood Library, and Yonkers Public Library for making this phenomenal partnership. And we thank each and every one of you for being part of our wellness community. Be well, stay well.